Right, it's a great title, and then we, you know, kind of like this. I've given it all, you know? Yeah. And then the next thing you know, that's it. That's the song. Let's write it now. Yeah, that was it. And so it was kind of like the Stonesy acoustic kind of thing. And it was like, we're cutting it tomorrow. I was like, what? Yeah, that's it. We're done. So you we know? found a studio up on South Lamar. We go there. Yeah. We get Gerf Morlicks, who worked with Lucinda Williams. Right. His friend of us. He was like the secret weapon. And yeah. And the guy, Stuart Sullivan, was running the, the, the yeah, studio. Yeah, really great room. And great guy. And yeah. I think the studio used to be a bar that Willie Nelson used to go to. The ceilings were really low, like a bar, like an old-fashioned bar and from like 40s or, or 50s. Yeah. yeah. And looked like an old pool hall. Like Sublime, and their, their albums pretty much come out of there, a lot of those guys. And it was a cool scene. And that was how I got actually introduced to Adam Monitors. I don't know if you ever worked with Adam, yeah, but course, Adam it's fantastic. It was like, the great thing about those monitors, we'd work like 10 hours and go back to the hotel room. I didn't hear any ringing. It's like, Just there's no... fatigue. Yeah, because they use ribbon tweeters. Okay. And ribbon has, it, it, it kind of, there's a soft... It's warm and soft. Uh, yeah, very warm uh, to the high end, yeah. but very accurate. And then when I took the mixes back to LA and listened to them, I was like... That sounds like our record. It wasn't like, because I was afraid, you know, it was like, you go to an outside studio. Yeah, you don't trust uh, You know, and then you take them back. Oh, boy, we're in trouble. But it was like, oh, and the record sounds exactly the way it was in the studio. So we, you know, we got, you got to get lucky sometimes, you know. So when you get your hands on a, uh, a young artist or an artist that hasn't quite done a lot of records. Yeah. And when that red light goes on, it could be intimidating. You get the jitters. You know, even the best of us, the seasoned pros, you know. Sometimes that red light gets through. How, how do you get an artist to settle in and get comfortable in the studio and, and give their best performance? I think that it's it's the time before, I think it's the pre-production that kind of uh, breaks the ice between us and um, allows them to know that, I, 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 would, I call it a, a circle of trust. You know, yeah. do, 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 do you trust me? Because if you do, you can fall and I'm here for you. Yeah. Nothing can go wrong. There's no such thing as a mistake. And all we're going to do is just make a record. Because even some of the mistakes can be be serendipitous. Sure. We, we, were, running, we were running back uh, one, of the, one of the songs. Uh, Charlie Sexton came in and did some vocals. Right. He lived around the corner. For the second album, yeah. Stuart knew him. Yeah, right. And so he just was having to stop in for some reason. And they decided, hey, could you like throw these vocals on this just to kind of flesh it out right when they were listening to it come back and we ran out of tape <laughs> and the thing kind of like right and we and it is the dead end became part of the song right right you know so, so you, go ahead yeah so so I, I i think that for an artist that hasn't made a lot of records i think it's just you know it, it's just I, how, how do I create a circle of trust for you to know I'm here for you? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about anything. All you got to do is sing and play your songs. That's yeah. it. It's like, that's it? Yeah, that's it. It'll all kind of come together because mm -hmm. your songs and you are the centerpiece. And I'm going to make sure you're up front and center. <laughs> you know, Sorry. and then slowly but surely people start, you know, all right, let's see what happens here. And then they come in. So, hey, come in and Liz, like, oh. Hey, that's pretty good. All right, let's do another song. <laughs> Definitely. You know. So, um, as an artist, how do you support your record? Are you touring? Are you just kind of focused on maybe online sales or playing the, the you know, the syncing licensing game? Well, I think some people know more about the licensing thing and that certainly do than I do. Um, for me, I, I just stay, I've just stayed focused on the writing and. And, and playing whatever opportunities come. Uh, I stay, I've stayed in touch. Marvin and I have sort of developed a relationship where it's like we're brothers <clears throat> and kind of just encourage each other. Uh, out of that has come some opportunities for touring. We went, wound up in Italy together. And uh, that was a whole interesting, again, serendipitous thing. Yeah. How did uh, that happen? I was, was someone you met? Yeah, I was, well, from from our working on the one record uh, and meeting Gerf Morlix. Okay. <clears throat> from, from meeting Gerf Morlix, um, I wound up going over and being part of uh, a Towns Van Zandt tribute night. And in Austin? In, no, in Milan. Oh, Milan. In okay, Milan, that was, Italy. but that was before I went with you. Before you went with. Okay, me. so you went on your own once. I went on okay. my own. Okay, right. It was post, uh, but it was post Austin. 
Right, right. after the second album. Yeah. Right. So I get there, I'm hanging with uh, Gurf, and on the way back, <clears throat> I meet uh, Pietro. Pietro. So uh, I, there's a guy who was part of the Towns Van Zandt tribute, was from Sweden. He'd come over for that. We ride the train back when we get in Milan. He's meeting a guy who was a producer that lived in Milan. His name's Pietro Foresti. I, I get invited back to his house for dinner. We're talking. The next thing you know, uh, I play music at the dinner table to kind of thank him for inviting me for dinner. And then he starts talking. I told him, I said, my albums. I gave him my albums. Told him about Marvin. Well, they knew Marvin over there already. So they're going... Well, can we get you to come back with Marvin? So then I call Marvin. I said, "Hey, there's these guys that want to meet you. Want to go to? You want to go to Italy?" And I think they had an artist they would like. They wanted him to produce over there. So it's like, again, you, do you trust me? It's a circle of trust. It's a friendship. So I'm going. I'm getting you work. Let's go do this. Yeah, it just continued. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, That's and awesome. even even the way that we reconnected here, I hadn't seen Ralston in years. We're, we're in touch on the phone, and we're email. How you doing? Great, you know. And then all of a sudden, uh, Wednesday night was the first night here. It's like midnight, and I'm about to play one of the the rooms here, and I, I feel a tap on my shoulder. I turn around. It's Ralston. I hadn't seen him in years. I didn't know he was going to be here. He didn't. He, was he had no idea wow. that I was going to be here. And then like we've been hanging out like the whole conference. Like, hey, I'm doing this. All right, well, I'm going to go do that. All right, I'll see you. You know. That's awesome. You know. So that's like I was saying earlier. The way that, it, it, you know, it's like the way that we operate, like outside the studio, is how we operate inside the studio. Inside the studio. You know, it's kind of, I remember one time there was a, a Christmas party years and years ago, and there was a guy that said, I know how to read and analyze your handwriting. How many people want to do it to, to ch test it? And, you know, all these, he goes, oh, what I want you to do is write Merry Christmas and sign your name. Mm -hmm. That's it. So he's analyzing everybody's handwriting, and then he says, is Marvin here? Yeah. And the way that I wrote it, he said, you wrote Merry Christmas and sign your name in the exact same size. And what that means is your message, when you say something, that's who you are. What you see on the outside is what's going on on the inside. Wow. It was really fascinating because a lot of people, they write the message really small, tiny print, and their name is really big. And he said, that means you are more important than the message. And sometimes it'd be the other way around. Like, Merry Christmas, real big, and their name is tiny. You can't even find it on the letter. Wow. I mean, their message. But he said, with you, he says, what you see is what you get. That's awesome. <laughs> and, and it's kind of the same thing in the studio. It's like, if we don't like each other over a cup of coffee, if you don't want to hang with me here, yeah. why are we going in the studio? Yeah, 20 hours in the studio. You know suck. what I mean? It's not going to get better. Yeah. You know? It might get worse sometimes. It might get better. But this is kind of who I am. This is kind of who you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like all of a sudden it's going to... Change. It's not it, to change to the point like we're not going to recognize each other, you know. So if we can kind of keep the vibe going between us and and have the communication of like, you want to try another song, you want to take a break. What's I'm here to serve the artist. If Ross is the artist, I'm here for him. It's his record, you know. He knew that I had songs. He didn't record my songs, and I'm like, fun. We didn't even talk about it. It was like. I'm here for your songs. Mm -hmm. Even when it came down to the last song we were looking for, I wanted to encourage him to, to come up with that. Not and, to it, force him into Right. Something. It's like, oh, you got to, let's, you know. And, and so that to me, what is the right thing for the artist? There might be some artists that, hey, we got to look for an outside song. That's cool for that artist. But what's good for him, I think, for him, I wanted his records for him to be known as the singer-songwriter. So when you think of Ralston and go, you wrote those songs, oh, that's cool. For someone else, you know, like when Sam Phillips produced Elvis, it didn't matter if he wrote the songs because he, he was coming from a different point of view. Mm -hmm. You know, so every artist-producer uh, relationship is defined by what are the parameters of the artist. Some artists can write. Some of them, they do part of their own... Sometimes they'll do covers or so, you know, every, every artist is different. That's why every record has to be approached uniquely to, to 
cater around, uh, you know, the brilliance of the artist, I think. No, I agree. So, so business-wise, in the last, I don't know, five years to a decade, we've seen an a obvious shift in the, not only the way that records are made, but the way that records are distributed and uh, consumed by the consumers or lack thereof. How has that um, affected the way that you do business as far as maybe the way that you bill a session? Are, are you working from an aspect of hours spent, or are you more dedicated in coming on a lot? along for the ride of the project, yeah, you're getting paid, but yeah. you're adjusting kind of your upfront payment based on that. It, you know, usually I, I, I try to work out a fee either per song or for the whole album okay. rather than an hourly billing so no one can come up to me. And uh, if I say, you know what, um, can we get together tomorrow and maybe spend a few more hours in the studio on the song it was like oh i get it you're actually going to yeah. bill me for another day of your time in the studio it's like yeah. no whether we spend one day or five days yeah. that's what i get and i don't the pressure off yeah and then you know that you know it's it's my, my uh you know my my, my intention is for your benefit because I don't get anything, if anything, I'm giving more of my time for you and your record and your artistry. And I don't get more from it except a better result. That's what I'm going for. And if you believe that, then let's go back in. Mm -hmm. Right? So there are some people that are like, hey, this is my day rate. But if I'm producing, it's like, give me a flat fee per song or per album that seems fair. And if it takes a short amount of time or sometimes an artist will say, hey, I need a, a couple weeks off. I want to write more. Or I'm doing some shows, so I'll wait. Sometimes the record could take a, a much longer period of time. And it's like, okay, I'll have to wait it out. Un unless, you know, there was one record that literally was like, you know, we're, we've we been working together on and off for over a year. Do you think we could <laughs> work something out, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some people will, you know, usually try to be as fair as possible because if I did bill them by the hour, by the day, it would be like, uh, oh, this is it would yeah, make sense yeah, yeah, for, the, for them to do it. So I try to be as, you know, as fair as possible. And also, like I said, keep in mind, what's the big picture? What are we trying to create? And it's the, the goal is for me to be of service to the artist, to the song, to the end result of the album and every step of the way for it. And if we can come up with something that doesn't give the appearance or a false illusion to the contrary that wait a minute you we're go we spent three days on this song and i'm paying you by the hour by the day it's like well i'm already doing that for the engineer i can't do that for the producer too yeah you know what i mean so then this way it kind of relieves the pe pressure that if i make a call they know my intention is their intention we're on the Sorry. same side. We're on the same team, so to speak. Then we put that, all that behind us. Okay, well, we're done with that. Now let's go for the ride. <laughs> we're in it together. So, uh, That's true. I mean, he, he, there was no, there was at no point did I feel any kind of, of sand through the hourglass kind of thing. He's bringing an A game to what I'm doing as much as he would be bringing it to any other project that he's doing. Because at the end result mm -hmm. is... He wants to be happy and proud, and when that record gets any kind of attention or award, it's as equally, I feel it's as equally shared because of who he is and what he's brought to the, you know, his talent that he brought to the table. Now, it's up to me then on the heels of that to deliver a, a tour or a program or, or a, you know, if I don't have the goods to follow up on that, that's, it's going to go down, but... But he's brought the best game possible, and, and now I can be proud of that. And the trust that I have in him to deliver that is, you know, that's part of it. Yeah, I, uh, I got a lot of friends that are young, well, my age, you know, and, and once the transition kind of came in, they, they, were, they came into the business with this idea of how much a producer or a mixture makes or maybe based on what they were making before. And then the game changed. I mean, people... We're not selling records quite like we used to. See, Some are, but for the vast majority, most aren't.